Okay, uh, for the benefit of the recording, I'm Dan Toomey, and I'm presenting a short session tonight to the Brisbane Azure User Group on Microsoft Flow. So I'm a, I'm a consultant for Mexia. We're enterprise integration specialists, so obviously I'm interested in all things to do with integration, which in this case includes Microsoft Flow. But before I go any further, I want to give acknowledgement to Charles Lamana. So Charles is the program manager for Logic Apps at, Mi at Microsoft, uh, Logic Apps, BizTalk Server, BizTalk Services, and Microsoft Flow. And most of the slides in this presentation have come from a deck that he used at the London conference, the Integrate conference, which I went to a few weeks ago. So what is Microsoft Flow? So Microsoft Flow, basically, it's a SaaS service that helps business users to work smarter by automating workflows across a number of apps and services that they typically use. So you can think of it kind of as self-service integration for business users, not for developers. So these would be fairly simple workflows. For an example, um, getting notifications when a, when a file has been updated or maybe even synchronizing files between two different locations, or automatically collecting data across various sources to organize your business data, um, maybe streamline approvals and get instant alerts. So Microsoft Flow makes it possible to automate all of these scenarios, and you don't have to write any code and work inside Visual Studio. In fact, you don't even need an Azure subscription to use it. So th those flows that I described before are very linear, but uh, Flow also has the ability to do slightly more advanced scenarios, so you can do conditional logic in them and have branching. Uh, you can also avail yourselves of a rather large number of connectors that are built in to, um, to uh, all different kinds of services. At the moment, I think they're up to around 35, and they represent connectors common to SaaS services. For example, just about everything in Office 365, like Outlook and OneDrive, to collaborative services like Slack, and CRM services like Salesforce and Dynamics. Uh, you can also interact with Service Bus. And if you write your own custom API connectors and expose them with Swagger, uh, you can publish them and also consume those from Microsoft Flow as well. So the URL that I have at the bottom of this slide will give you a list of all the different connectors that are available now. And yes, I will publish the slide deck to the Meetup site so you can get that later. So in addition to coming with all those connectors, it also comes with a whole bunch of pre-built templates for very common types of integrations. And when I say a whole bunch, I mean a lot. It's over 100 templates that are currently there on the site right now. So it's very, very easy to get started doing simple uh, common integrations. So when you, uh, when you log into Microsoft Flow, you get into a landing page, and you have the option to search through or just list all the templates and, and choose one. And the templates are the way they're designed. They simply they focus on the actual services involved, so you don't actually see any code or any workflow or anything. It's like, yeah, I want to, I want to go from Twitter to Dropbox, and, and you'll just see those two things. And if you choose the template, you can start configuring it to make it work. And it's very, very basic to get these things up and, up and started. Uh, you also have the ability, if you want to, to build your own template so you can start from scratch and then select from all of the list of connectors that you have available and organize your own workflows complete with conditional logic. Once you get a template up and running, you also have the ability to debug it is really cool. So after, it's, after you've published it and it's run, you can go back and look and say, gee, what went wrong? And it will show you exactly what, what steps succeeded and what steps failed. You can drill down into the steps and see the detail of what had happened. And you can even uh, tell when the trigger itself fails. You can also keep track of all of the connectors that you've configured. So once you configure a connector in, in your Office 365, uh, it's there in the list. And you can, you can call them up and use them in various flows. Uh, and if anything changes, like your password expires, you can go in there and maintain the details for that connector in, in, within this list. So what's the big deal about Flow? Why, why are we talking about it? So basically, integration is a problem that every organization has to deal with. I don't think I've, I've known any organization that hasn't had to deal with in integration. And solving those problems across enterprise systems is a very specialized skill. 
It's the reason that Mexi is in existence. It's the reason why I have a job, because those skills are very highly sought after. Uh, but the problem is that some integration scenarios are really, really quite simple and very, very common. And you shouldn't have to hire somebody like me to work out how to collect tweets and put them in your Dropbox, right? That, that should be something very simple. Or, or uh, collect your email attachments into SharePoint, for example. So that's the, the situation that Blow is meant to address. It's meant to enable these kind of integrations to be produced by business users so they don't have to rely on developers. So the audience for Flow is, as you guessed, business users and specialists. And these are for you know, relatively simple integrations that aren't mission critical. Uh, as you get into the greater curve there of, of sophistication, that's when you have to start using real integration <coughs> tools like BizTalk Server or Logic Apps, and you probably have to hire someone like me. If you noticed when you were looking at that, that designer service, if it, if it looked a little bit like Logic Apps, well, that's because it's actually built upon Logic Apps. So the good news is that um, if you create one of these flows and then you find it gets really important in your business, it becomes mission critical, or just um, the amount of data that you have to move means that you, know, you, you, you need to get a little bit more resilience for it. Um, it's possible to migrate it quite easily from Flow to a Logic App. And then, of course, once you publish it to Azure, you can take care of all of that goodness. You know, you have the auto scaling and the auditing and the, um, the, all the robust features that you get within Azure. So without wasting much more time, I've probably got a couple of more minutes before the screen goes dark, uh, let's, um, let's go into a demo. There we go. OK, so when you go to Flow, it's, it's literally flow.microsoft.com. You uh, get into a landing page there. And you can go and, and search on the automations that you want to do. For instance, if I type <coughs> Twitter to Dropbox and do a search, it's going to go ahead and pull up the, the templates that match that. Or if you just want to see um, all flows, uh, you can see the number of templates that we have available are, are really, really quite extensive. Um, so in my case, I've actually created uh, a couple of flows before. When I was at the Integrate conference, I did, uh, while Charles was actually giving this presentation, uh, I created a flow to basically collect all of the tweets about Integrate 2016 and collect them into a file in Dropbox so I could look at them later. And if we just have a look, um, it's turned off at the moment, but we can go in and, and see how that looks. It loads the design to surface. So when a new tweet appears, each one of these you know, is a configurable item. So I've got my hashtag for that. Get the metadata. Uh, with this is um, this is basically the file path in my Dropbox, and the condition is that if the file doesn't exist, uh, it will create one for me. But if it does exist and it gets the file content, it will just go ahead and append that file. So going back after, uh, yep, leave this page. In addition to editing it, I can also look at the instances of when it's executed. And uh, I'll show you the debugger on that as well. So it's uh, started failing the last few times because I think I've uh, exceeded a, a content length in it. But as it loads up the data, the question marks will, will change. We can see that it, it actually failed on this one. Uh, and you get a lot of details like the inputs and the outputs in each step. So it's, uh, it's quite handy. I can also show you the, my list of connectors. These are connectors that I've already created for the flows that I've been working on. So I could try, but I think I'm going to probably run out of time to actually create a flow for you. So, but I think uh, what I will do, well, I'll try it. Let's see. Let's see if we can do this. So uh, this will be an interactive one. So those of you who have your phones handy uh, and Twitter, we can actually start collecting some tweets. So if you look at that hashtag, B-A-U-G, don't actually uh, send the tweet yet, because until I create the flow, then uh, you won't, it, it only picks it up from ones that are created after I've done it. But I'm going to search the templates for Twitter. And what I want to do is email tweets. From Office 365, email saves tweets about a certain keyword. So I'm going to go ahead and select that template. Uh, say, use this template. 
And because I've already created uh, these connectors already, they're appearing in a drop-down list, but I could always add a new connection if they weren't there. So uh, I'll go ahead and use this, and then I can configure this. So the query text for this is simply going to be the hashtag, B-A-U-G. And when you tweet, make sure they're good sentiments, OK? Because uh, my boss, Dean Robertson, was here, but he had to leave uh, a little early. A bit disappointed he wasn't here for my presentation. But I want him to know how great the user group is and, and how well things are going. You can thank him for the pizza and beer. What I'll do is I'll take these tweets and I'll deliver them to his inbox. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate that very much. So get user tweeted by. That's fine. Um, <laughs> so this is connected to my uh, Office 365 profile. And uh, <laughs> we're going to send the message. We, rather than sending it to my email, we'll send it to at mixia.com.au. <laughs> um, and you can see that you have all of these, um, these items that, it, that it's worked out that you can use to configure. So I don't even have to put them in. It's just extracted that from uh, metadata from the connections. So from, from Dan at. Uh, actually, uh, that can be email. That's my email address, so I can put that in there. And I'll put is HTML is true, so it's formatted a little bit better. And we'll go ahead and CC myself, just so that I know that it's actually working, because I can't see Dean's email inbox, of course. There we go. And we'll go ahead and create the flow. Uh, that will publish. It might take a minute or two to be active, but then at that point, if you wanted to start sending tweets, hopefully within a few minutes, we'll see things come. So you need a two in the front, so mm -hmm. you could do a, work, uh, a flow uh, from all the uh, Quinton.potmar.com. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Well, it's not like Donkey <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's right. OK. The Office Yeah, I think it did, actually, because I tested it earlier today. So it's interesting. <laughs> OK, so feel free to uh, go ahead and start tweeting. Uh, make sure you have that hash B-A-U-G in there. And we'll see if I get to start getting emails in my, uh, in my inbox. Uh, but meanwhile, I'll go back to the slideshow, and, uh, and we'll uh, we'll finish that. So first, I just need to uh, extend. There we go. OK. So we've done the demo. So use cases for that, obviously, being able to push data from one store to another, being able to do a, pr a workflow approvals, or maybe just capturing data for better visualizations. So this is an example here of Flow working with SharePoint. You've got uh, somebody applying for leave in a SharePoint form. Uh, then the manager gets a notification, and they either hit approve or reject. And that can feed into a flow that sends an email, which is either a, an acceptance, an you know, approval, or a denial email. You also might be able to collect a bunch of tweets and then pop them into a SQL database and run some Power BI over it and get an idea of some sentiment. So uh, Flow is available for office workers. And if you've got the private preview of SharePoint Online, you can apparently create a flow from within SharePoint. Uh, and actually create one and use a template. The idea eventually also is that you can embed it directly into your applications if you want, so people can start flows and create templates uh, or use templates from within your app. Uh, you'd all be familiar with Power Apps, right? So Power Apps is a, is a tool for being able to develop mobile applications very easily. So Power Apps uses the same connectors that Flow does. Um, and the relationship between these two things is that Power Apps allows you to act on, on things, whereas Flow enables you to actually automate uh, workflows. And they both rely on the same connector base. So a big question, obviously, is security. So Flow is a multi-tenant solution. So it does follow some certain <coughs> standard practices. So if, you, if you're deploying it in a certain region, it's not going to create instances outside that region. So there's a bit of data sovereignty there. Um, it does encrypt any sensitive data, like your keys and your tokens. Uh, but it's not, you know, I wouldn't be using this to do uh, financial stuff or anything, anything critical. Uh, in the future, the plan is for them to allow the administrators to, to execute policies on these to enable or disable certain connectors or certain templates so that users can't cross those security boundaries, like, for example, taking your SharePoint data and publishing it out to a Dropbox somewhere. That doesn't mean that 
it can necessarily stop people from doing things they shouldn't do. For example, like you know, scraping tweets off and, and flooding your manager or your boss's email inbox. Uh, so you know, the, think of uh, the spectacular ways that you could lose your job doing this. So, um, so it does re require a little bit of discipline there. And how much of that can be controlled by the policies that the IT administrators can use, I'm, I'm not really entirely sure yet. But if you've got mission critical applications or anything that involves tight security, you, you, you should definitely be using more mature integration platforms like Logic Apps or BizTalk to develop those. And you know, once you deploy to Azure, in that case, then you have all the other goodness in Azure that you can leverage. You know, your cloud policy, security center, all of the auditing, and you know, and the scalability and everything that comes with that. So the summary basically is that Microsoft Flow becomes a self-service integration tool for business users to be able to develop simple applications that uh, that don't require someone like me to come in and, and do that. But uh, if you have more advanced scenarios, obviously you still need those tools and, and people like me, so I, I'm probably not out of a job, at least not until Dean opens his inbox tomorrow. And the other good thing is that integration solutions that someone like myself might develop if I'm creating custom connectors and API apps, your organization business users could use those within their flows. So there is opportunity there as well. So resources, uh, you got the website there for Flow. From there, there are links right on that place to, to jump to the documentation, so you don't really have to memorize that link ID, uh, and the blog as well. There's a community user group and some videos up there, and if you want to follow it on Twitter, those are the tokens for you to do there. I will be publishing these slides on Meetup. If this video, uh, this recording comes out well, I'll, I'll publish a link to that as well. And depending on the mood that Dean is in when he opens his inbox tomorrow, I may be publishing my CV too on Meetup. So if you know anybody who needs a good integration architect, let me know. Hold on. Thanks very much, Dan. Yeah.